So everyone, welcome to our SEO brunch, 10 minute audit. For today, we're gonna go through the deck box. Um, and again, my name is Michael McMillan. I'm the principal SEO consultant for McMillan Search. Um, if you wanna add me to LinkedIn, we tested this last time, it works. So you can use that QR code or you can just look up Michael McMillan. There's only a handful of us on, on LinkedIn. If you're looking from Halifax, you're pretty pretty likely to get, uh, get my, my cell phone there. Uh, and I always like to start off with the Maslow's hierarchy of SEO needs because it's a good way of kind of understanding what we're going to talk about and what, what it actually means. Uh, today we're going to talk, it's more, it's almost at the very bottom here because we're looking not, it's not necessarily about accessibility, but just structural things about the site that can help us understand things, and make some more informed decisions going forward. And uh, we always like to mention our web copy guide. It's um, release uh, an update of this every Christmas ish. Uh, if you go to mcmillansearch.com slash guide, uh, you'll get this uh, beautifully designed document that uh, highlights our uh, tactics that we use for optimizing content to help your content perform better. And if you want to be considered for a 10 minute audit in the, the near future, you can go to mcmillansearch.com slash SEO brunch slash 10 minute uh, site audit. If you check in the chat, Kenzie will be posting links to everything as well. So don't feel like you have to remember all that. There we go. Thank you, Kenzie. All right. Well, I'm going to escape this just for a second. We'll load things up. So today we're going to look at the duck box. And I know the site that you submitted was the, uh, for, for the audit was actually uh, the, the shop site, which you can get to here from the web store section. But we want to look at it as one big whole. Let's uh, try to think of the whole website. And it, it, it's a brick and mortar location, but you do have a shop as well. Um, so the first thing that came to our attention is when you do go to this web store here, we're getting it outside of your regular domain. And I believe Lightspeed is your point of, uh, your POS system, if I'm not mistaken. Joshua and Rachel? Yes. Yeah, so it's awesome that it, it ties in with your inventory. That's gotta be really useful. You can just basically, your inventory is online. You don't have to, have two different inventories in, in, in play, which I think is really useful. Um, but we, what we have found in the past is that when people go to a shopping site, if they go off your main domain, it can be a little bit jarring. And also as you're building up the authority of your main domain, you can do, if you have this shop site on, the, um, on a version of your main domain, be it a subfolder, which is what we prefer, but it can be a subdomain if that's the only options available. It's a little bit less jarring um, and it helps you build that authority around. So as you're building authority for these individual products as they're being shared as, pe as they're ranking and as people are visiting, it's easier to transfer some of that authority to the site as a whole, which just helps to, to lift all ships. So uh, with, with this uh, product though, so the suggestions we had was either a, a slash shop, um, we'll come back here. The other thing is when you hit the homepage here, you, you go back to the homepage of the shop, you don't go back to the homepage of the main site. So there's some structural things I would, I would take a look at. But um, looking on here, the light speed there um, looks like it is a possibility. Um, it's, uh, let's see, I had, I had looked up light speeds uh, work. Do do. So um, it looks like it is a possibility. I would reach out to them and find out through their support system if it's possible. Ideally, I would do the subfolder because then it's treated as part of the bigger site. Whereas if you did subdomain, even though it is, is associated to the main site, uh, it wouldn't be, um, it, it could still be considered as its own separate site. So the options we're thinking of are either slash shop, for an example, not really, don't get hung up on the, what the domain is, or sorry, what the URL is, just as long as it's uh, co-related with, or as a subdomain, so shop.thedeckbox.com deckboxhealthfacts.com, excuse me. Um, and if this is outside of your wheelhouse, I would really recommend looking into Lightho Lightspeed looks to have a, an experts page and we'll send these notes off as well, uh, where you can reach out to somebody who's trained in this uh, and help it all align. But I, I'm pretty sure this isn't the first time they've come across this. So I, I would recommend uh, looking into it and seeing, uh, getting that set up. Uh, one thing to consider before you move, though, is you want to set up redirect. So this is a conversation you want to have with either your, the people that are doing this um, or with uh, the support if you're going to try to leverage it yourself. Because all the pages on the on this site here are driving about 100 sessions of organic traffic. Um, 
and you don't want to lose that built traffic or that authority that's built up. So what you want to do is get an output of all the all the different products there, and either they can do it at a mass scale where they redirect this whole domain to that subfolder, or you, if you have to, you might have to do it at a one to one standpoint. But since you do have things like I, I don't know if you're aware, but you rank eighth for death rattle barrel lords, for an example, which is great. Bottom of first page, um, all the signals are there. You could get up uh, to to the first page, but you know you're getting some traffic from that, and that that can with that that can help. Um, any questions about that so far? No, nothing currently. Like for us, you know, in all honesty, like this, you know, we are 100% organic. We've never sort of done anything outside of sort of put up a web page mainly just to be able to direct people to when they had questions about products or things that we had in store or we had things going on. Uh, so we've never done anything in terms of, you know, driving traffic or, you know, tagged content or anything along this line. So for us, it's a, a very new experience because we are very much focused on the in-store and the code stuff has made us sort of go, okay, well, you know, I got some time where I can't drive traffic in-store. Let's see what our other options are. Awesome. Yeah, if you're going to lead into this, I would highly recommend setting it up on, under your main domain and then it, it'll all be one ecosystem that people can uh, go around. And then that kind of leads us to our, our, our next thought uh, is Google Analytics. We don't see analytics set up on both sites. And with everything on the same domain, you won't have any issues with uh, uh, self-referring uh, analytics. So it, it, I would recommend setting up Google Analytics. There is uh, the ability to do it with Lightspeed. They have a tutorial on it. We'll include these links as well. But uh, here, I'll ping this up, put this up in the, on the screen here. Uh, this is the basic analytics setup. Uh, Matt and I are both big fans of Tag Manager, so they do have a way of doing custom tags. Uh, you know, we're getting a little advanced here. If you could just get analytics up there to start uh, on both sites, then you'll really understand that customer's journey a little bit better, and it'll help you lean into what what channels or what pages are performing or which ones are underperforming, but have all the right signals and can help you boost things up. Have you guys explored Google Analytics yet? Uh, don't even know what it is, so I'm going to say no. <laughs> okay, awesome. Well, a little quick uh, debrief on analytics. It's it's free. It's basically website information um, that you can drill it down by channel, so you can know who's coming from social media. You can find out who's coming from organic. You can shift over to paid, for an example, uh, or not shift over to paid, but you can see who's coming in from paid traffic or any other media, direct traffic. Uh, just a great way of processing this information and understanding how uh, your website's performing and, and, and helps you make more educated decisions going forward. Um, and then as well, I would say we didn't, uh, because analytics is not up, search console is not set up as well. And the, we have a post on here that we'll, uh, I'll get Kenzie to share this one in the, in the chat as well. That's kind of a, a beginner's guide to search console, setting up Google search console. And what this does is it gives you insight into how you're performing an organic search. So it'll actually tell you what pages are performing and what, what time frames are performing. You also get to figure out um, what, like, what issues Google's having crawling and finding your site. That so that can help you lean into that as well. That, um... Sorry, I'm just gonna, no, I think we're good there. Um, uh, give you any issues you're dealing with from like Core Web Vitals or from the mobile user experience. You can figure this all out from that. And again, it's another free product. Um, we highly recommend getting Search Console set up, but it's a lot easier to set up once you have analytics set up. So get your analytics set up first, and then you can go in and set up Search Console. So any questions on that? I see, Rachel, you've taken over. So do you have any questions? Um, no, I got notes though. <laughs> awesome. And what we'll do is we'll, we're, we're, we'll compile this video and send off our notes to you guys before we post. Uh, this information on Digital Nova Scotia's website as well. Uh, so uh, you, you, all the links are in there. If you have any questions while you're processing it, feel free to ping us back and we'll, uh, we'll try our best to support you. But with all that being said, I'm going to pass things over to Matt Whale and he'll talk over the, the opportunities he saw for paid ads. All right. Thanks, Mike. Uh... Uh, hi, Rachel. Nice to meet you. Uh, my name is Matt Whalen. Uh, I'm a uh, paid uh, digital consultant um, here in Halifax. Uh, I participate in uh, SEO Brunch uh, every month and just like to give a little bit of the 
uh, the, the paid angle uh, side of things when we're talking about our 10, our 10 minute audits. So um, the, the deck box is uh, an, interesting, uh, an interesting one for, for us and for me because um, as Mike kind of went over, um, some of the fundamentals uh, in terms of like the foundational stuff uh, need to be put into play. Like he mentioned analytics, I think that's super important getting that up and going um, and some other kind of basic measurement stuff. And the reason why you want that uh, kind of just to echo his sentiments, the reason why you want that stuff in play is I would never recommend to anyone to, to, to spend any money uh, on, on digital advertising unless they could, you know, conceivably measure the results. And you can't do that really without, without those basic pieces in play. You can't really do it effectively anyway. So, you know, before you even, whether you're considering paid at this juncture or not, um, it always makes sense to get that stuff in play before you ever kind of start paying for any kind of traffic or anything like that. So um, having that said though, um, a couple of things I wanted to, 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 to mention, and I think, uh, again, just I think based on where you're at right now um, in terms of uh, in terms of the business and advertising and things like that, um, we'll keep things super uh, kind of super basic and intro in terms of where you might want to go. And I think where uh, and I have some some notes that we'll send along after, but I think where it makes the most sense for you to start is um, you can experiment with um, different objectives and interest targeting on, on Facebook. So you can set up a campaign on Facebook um, for in you know an unlimited number of, of ways. But I think what makes sense for a business like yours is um, obviously you keep the, the the you keep the targeting to just kind of the Halifax area where customers are likely to 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 drive or where you can also uh, do pickups and deliveries, that kind of thing, because you don't ship currently. So uh, you can't do things like online shopping campaigns and things like that, because normally those campaigns like through Google require you to be able to ship so, or to do those things. But you can do Google or, or you can do Facebook, I'm sorry, campaigns, and you can set up a couple of different uh, things to try. And the, the, the two objectives um, that I would recommend, and an objective for Facebook is basically you're telling Facebook, this is what I want to buy with my money. Um, so you can buy lots of different things. And the two things I would say is you can experiment with a traffic campaign. A traffic campaign is um, kind of what you think of when you think of an online advertising campaign where it's I'm buying, I'm paying money for people to click an ad to come to my site and hopefully buy something or at least, you know, become a customer later on down the line. That's a little more straightforward. Um, and I'll talk about that more in a second. And then the second is a, a messages campaign. This one is not necessarily right for everybody, but I think it seems right for you where, you um, instead of paying to get clicks to the website, you pay to get people to send you messages on Facebook. And if you've got someone monitoring that, like either through a mobile device or someone who's, you know, if you can access that uh, through the cache so if someone's working, you can have that, um, you can have that be part of their role to answer customer questions. You can have um, campaigns that are set up to direct messages to those people and they can answer questions. It's basically like someone calling the shop or coming in. Um, so you can do a lot with that and you can even set those up so that it kind of leads the customer into a conversation where you can start talking about, you know, sales. So you could have an ad, for example, that was about events that you run or, or something like that. And then that leads them into uh, how do I participate? Uh, what if I don't own the things I need to participate? Where can I buy this stuff? You can do all kinds of things with that. So there's lots of opportunity there. Um, but the next thing I wanted to talk about that applies to kind of both of those different objectives is, but strictly more strictly traffic is um, on Facebook, uh, Facebook has lots of different ways to target users. You could do it by age, location, all kinds of things. But one of the most interesting things that they offer is interest targeting. And for a lot of my clients, interest targeting is necessarily the best because um, it's hard for Facebook to discern what your interests are. It's, you have to, it kind of guesses what your interests are. And then sometimes you tell it by like liking a page, for example, but for products the, like the ones you sell, um, which can be a little bit more niche, people tend to express their interest in more obvious ways to that. So for example, I, uh, I'll include a screenshot in the notes, but, um, I was able to find like some interests related to Warhammer 40 K. So that's a product line that you sell. So you could have a, a little mini campaign that's all based around Warhammer. So it will show ads to people who live in whatever area you um, select. So it could be the HRM 
or it could be kind of as far as like Truro, for example. And you could say, I want to advertise to Warhammer fans. And then you could show them an ad that's about an event coming up or a special price you have on something or a new product arrival, or it could be anything. Um, and so the ad and everything could be very specific to that niche group. And so there's really not a whole lot of, a lot of other platforms where you could do that type of targeting. And you know you don't need to spend a lot of money to do that. You don't need a super uh, professionally designed ad. This can be very simple. Um, so there's lots of opportunities I think out there for something like that. Um, and then the kind of switching gears entirely um, just before I kind of close out here, uh, I think it's not so much a paid campaign, but something that I think is worth looking into is when I was looking at the store and looking at the website and, and kind of where you are at today, um, yeah, I know you're still pretty early in kind of uh, moving things online, is it would be worth considering uh, kind of medium to long term some kind of uh, regular e-newsletter, especially what makes me think that is, uh, again, because of the somewhat niche um, nature of your, your customers. Obviously, you sell a wide variety of products, and so the, you, you com you're combining a lot of niches together, which makes it more broad. But something to consider would be uh, what, what really um, came to my mind was there's a local retailer here in Halifax. Um, they have an online store. Um, in their vertical, they were among the first to kind of move online among their competitors. When they did it, um, no one really had done it. Uh, like they had yet. So um, they were the first to market a little bit in terms of online. And one of the early things that they started doing is they started sending out a, uh, uh, an e-newsletter every week on the same day. And it was a specific e-newsletter. It wasn't just like, here's what's going on at the store or here's events that are coming up. It wasn't, it wasn't so generally. It was, here are three products-ish, two to three products every week that we've marked down it's only going to be for like whatever 24 hour 48 hours and there's limited quantities of these products we've marked these down to like whether it's 25 percent or 30 percent or 40 percent or whatever the case may be and they have that newsletter is so you sign up for the newsletter and you know every week in your inbox you're going to get these good deals not every week is going to uh, interest you or apply to you but i was able to see their uh their numbers in terms of revenue and it was incredible what they were able to drive with this type of campaign and this does a lot of things for you um more than just the products you sell yes obviously by discounting products you're kind of cutting into your margin but um, you know, if you're trying to get people to used to using the online store, this is a great way to do it. You're engaging your, your existing customers to do that. You can get new customers by saying, hey, look, even if you're not going to buy something today, if you sign up for our weekly newsletter, there's deals that come into your inbox every single week. And it can be just on SKUs you're trying to get rid of, SKUs you have a lot of, new SKUs can be anything. You decide what goes on sale and when. And uh, so this gets people using, used to using your online store, helps you recruit new customers and helps you keep your current customers, your repeat business um, engaged for a long period of time. So I think there's a lot of benefits and it's not strictly a paid thing, but uh, it's definitely worth considering. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions about anything I just went over? No, I think the biggest thing for us, you know, we've always, you know, you know, the, the, the promotion side and advertising side of our business has always been something we've really struggled to do effectively. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that, you know, we've found that has worked for our model is we've, you know, we've really marked ourselves as the local option, the local store for our, for our brand. Uh, and as such, you know, one of the things we've looked at when we've looked at other marketing avenues and options is that a lot of that stuff tends to go really wide and kind of presume that there's a shipping globally. And, you know, while that is pretty common in our industry, we found a lot of success of just saying, no, we're, we're, we're going to cater to our basically people within, you know, an hour drive distance of us and anything past that is sort of, you know, not our market and we'd rather just kind of throw down so on local so we can hyper, you know, do like, you know, hyper local marketing. That sounds great. Absolutely. I agree with you 100%. Based on the products you sell, I mean, I can get these products online some like somewhere else. I don't necessarily need to get them. So, but the fact that I can go to the store or get it picked up or even have a local delivery, if I can do that, not wait for shipping, I can support a local business, that means a lot. So you you bake that into the marketing and I think and I think that's where the, the success is really gonna come from. And I think you're, you already nailed it. The, the, the key piece here is focus on your um, focus on your target market, which is not only the, like the people who are, you know, likely customers whose interests align with what you sell, but also, um, you know, who live like in the area. You don't need to compete with 
Amazon and the and the big hobby stores and stuff like that. You don't need to compete with those people because you have something that they don't, which is you have a store that's you know two kilometers from my apartment. Yeah, you know, and part of you know what we found is you know that, that having that immediacy for the clientele we want to attract, you know, the media the immediacy sort of trumps the okay, well I can get it for five percent less if I went online and waited a week or you know you know or I can just have it now. But like, we definitely cater to the I want it. I want it now and I don't mind paying a little bit more. And you've got, you know, uh, you've got a community built around products as well. So if I'm, like I said, depending on what I'm into, if using the example of like Warhammer, you know, fairly niche interest in terms of the overall scope of things, it ain't baseball. Yeah. But like, if I can meet people who are into the same things I am at the store that I shop at, that's a huge, like, that's a huge sales line for me. Yeah, one of the things that we found really interesting in sort of the in-store experience is that a lot of people do, you know, stuff like this in isolation. They don't necessarily talk to their buddies at work about it or their coworkers. Um, but we've had a, a lot of experiences of someone coming in on their lunch break and running into another, you know, coworker on their lunch break and going, oh, you play? You're like, you know, you're, you're into cards, you're into Warhammer. We should get together and do this, like, on our downtime. Like, you know, I didn't know. Like, now, I, now I know I can talk to you about, you know, oh, sweet, this new thing came out and I'm you know, really excited about it. And I had no one to talk to about this and now I have you. <laughs> so so it's, it, it's definitely been, uh, we've had some interesting sort of, like, people kind of go like, oh, I haven't seen you since, like, high school or I didn't even know you were into this. <laughs> All right, that's it for me. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kenzie. I'd like to say so, thanks to Mike yeah, and Matt no, there. Kenzie, sorry. No worries. Just want to say thanks to you both there for the great presentations. People, if you notice in the comments there, in the thread, uh, there's a deck box with a sign, as well as Michael McMillan and Matt Whalen on LinkedIn.